Alex Newman joins me now to discuss, founder and CEO of Liberty Sentinel. Alex, thanks for being back with us. It's great to have you. Great to be here. Thank you, Allison. So, Alex, I have to ask you in terms of the Soviet-era joke that I started the segment with, the FDA actually tried to argue they didn't interfere with the practice of medicine. What? I mean, based on their guidance, Dr. Meryl Nass, who I had on my show last week, was disciplined and still may lose her medical license for prescribing ivermectin to her patients. Can you unwrap all of this for us, Alex? Uh, it is absolutely Orwellian, Allison. Uh, you and I both know multiple doctors who went through this. Uh, and in fact, I, I saw the wonders that ivermectin did. I know multiple people who took it, who defied the doctor's orders, who didn't take the uh, remdesivir, who instead took uh, ivermectin. I know doctors who prescribed it had fascinating, incredible, and very promising results. And yet the FDA was constantly hammering them, trying to discredit them, uh, trying to make the American people turn against them. So uh, what we have here, I believe, is a crime of monumental proportions. They're trying to go back now and say, well, we didn't technically say you couldn't. But even the judge called them out on this. He said, you know, they, they wrote on Twitter, stop it. Uh, that sounds like a command. And that's what any kid in an English class would learn. That is a, a uh, command statement. And so uh, I don't know whether they're going to get away with this, but they're certainly trying to. And it's very, very troubling. It certainly is. And I'd like to also point out the WHO Director General Tedros said last week, and I quote, we recognize that many people in governments view COVID-19 as a thing of the past. So why are these recommendations still important for those who lost someone they love, for those who continue to be at risk of severe disease or death, for those who continue to suffer from post-COVID-19 conditions or long COVID? For them, COVID-19 is still a daily threat and a daily trauma. WHO will not forget about COVID-19. And then Tedros also said governments cannot forget about COVID because the recommendations will not only help to protect against COVID-19, it will also help countries to prevent and respond to other diseases. And the review committee is also discussing standing recommendations for MPOX, which it will later deliver this week. So it just seems to me, Alex, they don't give up. Uh, do you think the health scares will ever go away, or are they just part of another agenda? Is this all really to advance what I talked about in my last segment with Leo Homan uh, about bringing in a CBDC and a digital ID matrix of control and domination? That's the ultimate goal. There's no question about it, Allison. And in fact, uh, I believe we're getting ready now for round two of COVID. I'm hearing more and more from people within the federal government, from people within the bureaucracy, saying they're planning to bring it back. Maybe there'll be a new variant. Uh, in fact, last week, you and I spoke about the Biden Office of Pandemic Preparedness. Uh, they're getting ready for something big. They need something like this, uh, first of all, to, to lock us down again, to get us under control again. Second of all, to continue empowering themselves. Third of all, as a pretext to bring in these massive changes they want to bring in through the World Health Organization, et cetera. And I, I hope people understand there's a critical reason why they went after ivermectin. Millions of people are dead because of this, I'm absolutely convinced, and that's what many doctors I've spoken to have said, millions of people died needlessly because governments, not just the U.S. government, but because governments demonized and basically forbid ivermectin without exactly forbidding it. But there's a critical thing to understand here. They could never have gotten their injections approved if there was already a safe and effective treatment for COVID. We saw the same thing with hydroxychloroquine. They knew they needed to demonize these things. They knew they couldn't acknowledge what their own studies said, right? Hydroxychloroquine, uh, the, the U.S. government funded studies showing it was a very potent antiviral, that it had very promising effects against SARS-CoV, uh, uh, SARS COVID virus. So they had to do this because if there was already a treatment, they would never have gotten emergency use authorization for their injections. So uh, this this needs to all be unraveled. We need, I believe, criminal prosecutions. We need some of these people to be hauled before Congress and put under oath. Uh, and we need these people to be held accountable. Hopefully this court case uh, will help with that. But we've got a long way to go because these totalitarians do not give up. And the next health scare may be just around the corner. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button 
to get the news you can't get anywhere else.